Amara St. Brown. A lot of you guys probably know him from his performance against Washington the other day. It was amazing, and people are actually try trying to look at him as a legit top receiver in the league right now. But what if I told you he was actually drafted in the fourth round and was had to prove himself in the NFL? And he played at USC. This is the rise of Amara St. Brown from fourth round draft pick to star wide receiver. Quick before we get into this, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe because I post high quality sports content on pretty much all the leagues. And I try to post weekly. And I'm having a Q&A video in the future, so I'll leave your comments on what you want me to do next. Okay, this story is mostly about him being overlooked and underrated. But this story actually starts off as him being anything but underrated. He was a 5 star wide receiver, the 10th best recruit in the nation, the 2nd best receiver in the nation, and the 2nd best wide receiver in the state of California. He got offers from USC, Michigan, Notre Dame, Alabama, and Arizona State. And it is not hard to see why scouts loved him. He was only 5'11", but other than that, he was very athletic. His dad was Mr. Universe and helped him build muscle and still does to this day. He made jumping and athletic plays on a weekly basis, along with some of the best route running in the nation, with decent speed. Even though he might not be able to win as many 50-50 balls because of his build, and he could jump, but that wasn't but wasn't Randy Moss. His route running speed and his speed made him always open, and even in traffic his strength helped him. He had a grade 9 catching and a grade 9 route running and ball skills. His size didn't matter because he could do everything else. And it showed too in high school. He had 72 catches for 1,320 yards in his final year. And he enrolled in, at USC in 2018. USC had just lost the Cotton Bowl to Ohio State the year prior. After losing a thrilling Rose Bowl to Penn State in the year prior to that. And Sim Darnold was very good for college standards for them. And was heading into the draft. USC had lost some guys, but there would be a QB B battle, and that would end up being won by JT Daniels. USC was getting pretty thin with all their departures, including the aforementioned Sam Darnold, Ronald Jones, Juju Smith-Schuster in 2017, and more also declared. USC was trying to continue the success, so in his true freshman year, Sam Brown would start. In his limited playing time, 62 plays to be exact, he impressed, maybe not 5-star level, but he impressed with his situation. He did well having 60 receptions for 750 yards, 12.5 average yards per reception, and 3 touchdowns. You got to understand, his playing time was well, but not the vocal point, and he was mainly in the slot, with a, with a QB who threw only 14 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. His sophomore year, he was the man, playing 84 plays and having 77 receptions for 1,042 yards and 6 touchdowns, with a run rushing touchdown. He was living up to, the, to his hype, becoming a deep play threat instead of what some feared, a slot wide receiver. He used his speed well in the slot, but could just as well break outside. His speed helped him, and he caught lots of deep passes while being an elite route runner. This was all while having a QB B battle between Matt Fink and Kendon Slavis, I'm sorry I probably said that name wrong, and they were both splitting time. As long as he did not get hurt, his athleticism and production would carry him to a high draft spot. But in 2020, he, he had a shortened season, but he would suffer the worst case scenarios that were not even his fault, yet still plummeted his draft stock. He had 41 receptions for 478 yards and 7 touchdowns. He got hurt in practice and it bothered him the whole entire year with an inguinal groin sports heroin or whatever it's called. And his QB play was bad, but what really plummeted his draft stock was his AC sprain in his season finale game versus Oregon. Before 2020, he was a high he was a high recruit who had a decent freshman year and an amazing sophomore year and needed to show he wasn't just a one year wonder. His 2020 season was actually pretty good since 11.7 yards per reception ain't bad, but his injuries compiled with his 2020 season not being good along with his size and versus Pac-12 defenses made NFL teams pass on him. Even though when given the opportunity, he shined. He got picked in the fourth round by the Detroit Lions, and right away he had an amazing camp and he said, I'm here quote unquote, I'm here to take people's jobs. At first it was a slow start for him due to his inexperience and lack of playing time due to his newness. He would get eight targets in week four versus the Bears for seventy yards seventy yards and eight receptions for sixty five yards versus the Vikings. So far he was solid and looked like a potential building block, but nothing big. He needed to prove himself, and his believers were even getting bored with with him. He would m go mostly silent for a while, with his max amount of targets being five in his five-game span since the Vikings game. But then in Week 14 versus the Vikings, 
versus the Vikings again, this would be his moment. He finally was a starter after injuries to other Lions wide receivers, and he would get 12 targets, his first double-digit target game, and he showed up big. He had 10 receptions for 86 yards with a game-winning touchdown. He then followed it up with an 8 reception for 73-yard game versus Denver, finally giving the Lions weapons. He then followed it up with an 8 reception for 90-yard game and a touchdown versus Arizona, a 9 reception 91 in a touchdown game versus Atlanta, and an 8 reception for 111 yards with 2 touchdowns, one of which was a running touchdown versus Seattle. And to close out the season, an 8 reception for 109 yards in a touchdown game versus Green Bay. And closed out with 4 straight 90 plus yard games. He showed that when given the chance, he can rise to the occasion. Going into that offseason, they picked up DJ Chark, who was washed, and Jathan Jamison, Will, who is out for the time being with an ACL tear. So Brown was by far the team's best target, even better than Hawkinson. So this year, he didn't have to prove himself to the team. He had to prove himself to the world and let people know his name. In the season opener versus Philly, he had 8 receptions for 64 yards and a touchdown, being in the slot more and perfecting it, but still being an outside guy in 2022. In versus Washington, he shined, having 9 receptions for 116 yards and 2 touchdowns along with 2 rushing attempts for 68 yards. The dude got me 32 fantasy points. That game, even though it was only a little better than some of his 2021 performances, got people talking about him and is rightfully in the conversation among the top wide receivers. I am very glad for this and wish him great success, for I am also a Lions fan. From 4th round pick to star wide receiver, this was the story of how Amon Ross St. Brown rose to the occasion. If you like this, consider subscribing. I try to post high quality sports content. So I felt stuttering. Bye.